This is the geometry review for uh, unit 10, which is also part of chapter 12. So what we're going to look at here is breaking in this L shape to its area and then multiplying it by the distance between the two L shapes, which are considered bases of the solid. So this portion here is 9 by 2. So we have 9 by 2. And we also have, if this is 2, total of 5 gives us 3. So this is 3 by 4. So 3 times 4. So we have 18 plus 12, which gives us 30. The area of this base is 30. And the volume of the figure is the base times the height. The height is a distance between the bases. So we have 30 times 4. 120 units squared. For this triangle, we'll do the same type of thing. We're going to find the volume of our triangular prism. We'll round our answers to nearest decimal point. So we're looking at a triangle here. The height, they give us the height of the triangle. So our base is going to be half the 8 times the 6. So that gives us half of 48 which is 24 and the volume of this shape is the area of the base times the height that's true for every prism so the base is 24 and the height is the distance between the bases from triangle to triangle we have a distance of 4 again so we times that by 4 so we get 96 and that's meters Cubed. And I'm sorry, up here, this would have been units cubed because volume is three-dimensional. We have an area of the base, which is two-dimensional, times the distance between the bases. Next, we have a hex, uh, hex again, uh, hexagon. Funny. And so we're going to break this down into a triangle. We know that this length is 8. We've done this several times for different reasons throughout this unit. So we're going to come straight down and look at this triangle. So when we break this hexagon up, we have a triangle that has 4. It's a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Anytime you have a hexagon, you can break it into these triangles that are 30, 60, 90. So the long leg is 4 root 3. So we can find the area of this triangle by saying half of 4 times 4 root 3. That gives us half of 16 times root 3. That's 8 times root 3. That's the area of the base, or of the one triangle of the base. So now we can take our calculator and say 8 square root 3, and we have that number 12 different times all the way around the hexagon. So we get a total area of 100 and... 166.28 so we're going to times this by 12 to get 166.28 that is the base so once you have the base the volume is going to be the base times the height so we have 166.28 times the 5 which gives us 831.38.
that centimeters cubed. Now we have a cylinder. The cylinder is done a little bit differently for volume. When we unroll it, we have a circle here. We have Well, I'm going to turn that back. That's kind of talking about surface area. That was crazy of me. So, the volume is again going to be base times height, but our base is time is pi r squared times our height. So, if our radius is 3 and our height is 4, the exact answer comes out to be 9 times 4, which is 36, and that's feet cubed. 36 times pi gives us 113.1 feet cubed. We're going to find the length of x. We know that the volume equals 144. The figure is your length times width times height. Length times width times height. This is a rectangular prism and the area of the base is length times width. So the formula is length times width times height. So we have 144, or 1440 times 15 times 8 times x. I put the x last just to make it flow a little bit nicer. So 15 times 8 gives us 120. And we'll divide by the 120. So 1,440 divided by 120 gives us 12. And that number is very similar to the other type of numbers that we have in the figure. So what that means is that the 15 times the 12 times the 8, the area of the base times the height, gives us 1,440. With this next one, we're looking at a triangular prism. So for us to figure out the volume of a triangular prism, we need to know the area of the triangle. So to calculate that we need to know the two perpendicular sides. We know the hypotenuse and we know a leg. So we're, we're going to need to calculate for the other leg. So 17 squared equals 8 squared plus our unknown value. We'll call that h squared. So when we square our 17 we get 289. That equals 64 plus h squared. We subtract the 64 across. And we get 225. So when we take the square root, we get 15. So our missing number here is 15. So now to calculate the volume. The volume equals half 8 times 15, which we found out was 120, divided by 2, which is 60, times the height, which is the distance between the triangles. So 360 equals 120x. So x is going to equal 3. for our volume. This is our a cylinder again. So we have volume equals pi r squared times the height. 72 pi equals pi 2 squared times, well, what's our radius? Our radius is unknown. Our radius is r. Our height is 2. Got to put the values in the right spot. So we have 72 pi equals pi r squared. It's 
still times 2. We're going to divide that by 2. So we have pi r squared equals 36 pi divided by pi r squared equals 36 and r is going to equal 6. So that would be the radius. So we're going to sketch and describe the solid and find its volume. We have a rectangular prism. So we have a height of 3, we have a width of 6, and we have a length of 9. So that looks like 9, 6, and 3. So we're supposed to find the volume of this shape. Well, the volume is the area of the base times the height. So the base is 9 times 6, which is 54, times 3. So 54 times 3 comes out to be 162, and those are going to be feet cubed. For this one, it looks like it's kind of like a fish tank. We have a big rectangular prism, and then we have a smaller rectangular prism that is hollowed out. So it almost looks like the sides are real thin, glass looking like. So we'll look at the big volume minus the smaller volume. The big volume is going to be the 4 times the 5 times the 6. The smaller volume is going to be the 4 times the 3 times the 6. So the inside is 4, where it used to be 5. The inside is 3 where it used to be 4 but it does look like it goes all the way through if you look at the bottom it's we have the dashed lines indicating it goes all the way through so we have 120 and we have 72 so 120 minus our 72 comes out to be 48 millimeters cubed. So to fill in all the inside spot it would be 120 for the whole figure but only 48 for that small amount. We're going to find the surface area of a sphere, the volume, or actually the surface area. is 4 times pi r squared. Surface area is always squared, so that helps remind me what the formula is. The radius in this case is 4. So the surface area is going to be 64 pi. 16 times 4 is 64. So that's centimeters squared because it's surface area. And 64 pi is going to come out to be 201, 0, 06. That would be a rounded value. What is the approximate radius of a sphere with a surface area of 40 pi? Well, we have 40 pi equals 4 pi r squared. So we're going to divide by 4 pi. Divide by 4 pi. And then when we take the square root of our 10, we're going to get 3.16. And that's why the answer is B.
we're going to use this sphere, the center of the sphere is at this point C, and the circumference, the distance all the way around it, is called 7 pi. We're going to find the radius of the sphere. Well, the radius of the sphere is the same thing as the radius of the circle. So the circumference equals 2 pi r. If the circumference is 7 pi, we're going to divide by 2 pi, and that's going to give us an r value of 3.5. So the diameter is going to be 7 because it's twice the length. Those are still centimeters. Then to find the surface area of one hemisphere, which just means one side of this half circle. So they've taken a sphere and they've kind of chopped it in half. This is called a great circle, where it's the largest circle possible. So to find the surface area, remember, that's 4 pi r squared. If the radius is 3.5, then we're going to have 4 pi 3.5 squared. 3.5 squared is 12.25 times 4, which gives us 49 pi, which gives us 153.94. And those would be centimeters squared because it's surface area. We'll find the volume of this sphere. We notice here that the diameter is 16, so the radius is half of that. The volume is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So our volume is going to be 4 thirds pi 8 cubed. Raise 8 to the power of 3 and we get 512. We can divide that number by 3 and times it by 4. And we get a value of 682.66. And that would be pi. Times that by pi and we get 2,144.66 meters cubed. Sounds like a lot of volume. We're going to find the radius of the sphere with the given volume. So if we have 64 equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. We would multiply by 3 and divide by 4. So we have 64 multiply by the denominator, divide by the numerator, we get 48. And then we're going to need to divide by pi and take the square root, square root of our answer, 3.91. Well, I'm sorry, doesn't sound right. That's 48 divided by pi. And now we're going to have to cube root our answer. So we're getting 2.48. Those are inches. That is our radius. Next, we have 150 pi 
pi equals 4 thirds pi r cubed. So we'll multiply our 150 by 3, divide by 4, divide by pi, and we get 35.81 equals r cubed. We can take the cube root of our answer and we get 3.3. Okay, our last question for this side is find the surface area. Well, we have our cylinder and we have half of a sphere which would be called a hemisphere so we have a half a sphere plus we have our cylinder well our cylinder um, is going to be calculated by pi r squared it only has an area on bottom and to figure out the distance around the side, that is the circumference times the height. So that's all going to be added to half of 4 pi r squared. So the half and the 4 become 2 pi r squared. So we know that our radius is going to be 6. And our height of the cylinder is 4. So we have 36 times 2, which is 72. 36 pi. And 24 times 2 is 48. So when we take 72 and 38 and 48, we get 156 pi. So that comes out to be 490.09 centimeters. squared because this is surface area. And then for the volume, the volume would have been one half of four thirds pi r squared plus pi r squared times the height. So that becomes 4 sixth pi r, which is 6, and the height is 4. So the sixes reduce one of the sixes out of there, and we end up getting 24 pi. And 36 times 4 is 144. So we have 168 pi for our volume. So you times that by pi to get 527.79. And these are still centimeters. Now they're cubed. That's the front side here. I'll meet you on a different video for the other side.